Ladies and women, Andy here. It's the Inner Winner Show. Let's fucking go. This is a podcast I did with Haley from Your Guide to Love. So if you're not familiar with her, she runs a podcast, a YouTube channel, and an Instagram account about sexuality, self-improvement, and becoming a happier person. Her stuff is mostly targeted towards female, but it's absolutely awesome content. Imogen and I went on her podcast uh, a couple of weeks back, and I was super stoked to have her in my podcast. She very much thinks the same sort of way that most of us, as in the guys in my community, think. So self-improvement first, putting yourself first, aiming to build yourself up, and becoming the best person that you can be. She's also someone that I have to say I respect a hell of a lot. So she used to be depressed, overweight. She was working a corporate job she hated, and she went on to lose a bunch of weight. She quit her job. Uh, she stopped taking antidepressants, and she started looking after her health and building the life that she wants to build like most of us are here to do, right? So she's also a coach. Most of her clients are female. And it was absolutely great on that note to compare notes and talk about some of the differences between men and women. And we kind of, through the process, I love having women on my podcast because a lot of the time, a lot of the stuff that we guys struggle with, you'll find women struggle with the exact same stuff. And it really gives you a lot of perspective and it makes you feel a lot better if you know like, oh crap, like women are going through the same thing and vice versa. She had the same sort of you know, epiphanies with a couple of things. She was like, oh, you know, I never realized that men were going, are going through that as well. So it was a, it's a great podcast. You guys are going to love this episode. Stay tuned. And if you want more of my content, I'd really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button. Let's fucking go. How are sex and money related? Because they're both taboo topics. Everybody wants yeah. more of both of them. Yes. And yet people can't talk about it, right? Like I've literally had calls with people where I say, do you discuss your sex life? No. Oh, okay. Well, how's that working out for you? Then do you discuss your finances? No. And, and, and there's a, I can't remember where I read it. Maybe I'm making it up, but I, I think I read this study that basically said like the number one thing that breaks couples up in any relationship is money. And like, I can't help but think, and I think the number two or the number three was like a dead bedroom, like them not having sex with each other. I can't help but think like that's because they're not talking about it. Like, why is money an issue? Like, I get that money's a stress. God knows it is for Imogen and I. She quit her job so that she could like work, so to speak, full time for me and do marketing and stuff. And I said, I'll just pay the rent. You quit your job that you hate and we'll just go all in with this project. That's a lot of stress. I'm going to tell you right now, that's a hell of a lot of stress. But like, you just talk your way through it. And I can't help but think there must be a lot of couples that are just like, and you can tell me your experience. There must be a lot of couples that are not talking about money and not talking about sex. And then it's like, well, what do you, like, those are the two biggest deal breakers, like the two biggest things that break up a relationship. So do you find that much with your clients that you get in there and they're just not talking about this stuff? Yes. And I find, okay, what's interesting is the older they are, the harder it is, right? Like if I'm working for opposite. a woman. And a, yes, you're right. Like I worked with a client last year in her forties and I remember she was like, uh, she wasn't having an orgasm. Like the sex life, was, her sex life with him was horrible. Like he was like a two minute man. Like there was just so many issues. She had past sexual trauma. So there was like a lot. Yeah, and yeah. so I just remember thinking, let's just get the conversation, right? Like we don't need to put pressure on either party. Just start talking about it more. Yeah. And that was really hard. Yeah. I mean, how do you even start with that? Because I'm assuming they've been in a relationship for a long time. So like, what advice do you give to them? Like, how do you start that? What do you say? Do you just say like, I don't know, just bring up the fact that you have, that you want a better sex life. Or do you just say like, just bring out a dildo or something? Like, how, how do they start that conversation? A lot of times for me, when I always tell them, is like, listen, since this mainly starts with a feminine, it starts with women. Mm -hmm. I say you develop a healthy relationship with your own sexuality. Right. Let's get you to be the goddess, the queen, self-love, self-pleasure, mm -hmm. really step up the self-care, all that. Then you'll want to be with him more. You'll want to say, hey, let's let's try this. Let's try that. You know, let's go on more dates. Let's get back into it. I really like I'm so freaking glad you said that, because I think that like too many people don't focus on I call it responsibility, especially with women. There's there's this a guy that I learned a lot from um, a guy called Chris from Good Looking Loser. And he had this one article that on first reading, I was like, well, that sounds like rude. Like, why have you phrased it like that? And the article title was her orgasm is her responsibility. 
And I was like, well, that sounds rude. That sounds like, isn't it your job as the man to make her orgasm? Like, isn't that why we're there? And so the whole point of this article is he said, like, some women just aren't in touch with their bodies yet. They're not able to orgasm. It's up to her. You can help her. You can give her a little homework task. You can teach her. You can show her stuff. But, like, you need to kind of give her homework and say, like, look, if you want to orgasm with me, you're going to have to go and figure that stuff out by yourself. Like, try in the bath. Try with some candles. Try in bed. Try different toys. Try just, like, playing around under the sheets. Like, whatever you got to do go and figure that stuff out. So I'm really glad that you said to start with that because I give the same advice to men, right? Like if you're not happy in the bedroom, like you got to go away and figure that stuff out for yourself. You can obviously figure some stuff out with your partner, but uh, is this something that your clients, because most of your coaching clients are women, is this something that women struggle with? Like it seems like a cliche, but like women struggling to be in touch with their own bodies, to be okay with sex, to be okay with like their own body. Okay, so yeah, so basically it really depends on the woman, right? Like for example, mm. I've worked with a lot of women where they've had past sexual trauma. They've had a lot of um, like maybe issues with body image. So mm. self-pleasure really isn't on their list of to-do, <laughs> you know? So that's really where we start, right? Mm. Is the, hey, let's heal maybe your inner child. Let's mm. work on you feeling comfortable in your skin. Mm. Work on you loving your body, right? Maybe letting go of the goal of orgasm because sometimes it's so much pressure. Cause I used to be that woman where I couldn't have an orgasm and I told you this where it was so much pressure for me, even when I was self-pleasuring that I just didn't want to do it because it was like, it was exhausting. Yeah. It's like a chore. I, I can't remember if mm -hmm. I told you this when we came on your podcast. So for context, everybody listening, we Imogen and I went on your podcast on Haley's podcast. I can't remember if I told you on that podcast, but we also did an interview with another woman that I'm probably going to introduce you to, too, at some point, because she's awesome. Georgie Wolf. She's an escort. She's a sex educator. She does like a bunch of that stuff. And she did a podcast with the same stuff you're talking about, where she said, like, I just have this idea in my head that I have to orgasm. And so funnily enough, because of that, every time I'm with a guy, I just can't do it because I'm just like stuck in my own head. And so it, it sounds like you've gone through the same sort of journey. Imogen, my girlfriend, had to go through the same journey of like, Man, if I'm just sitting there obsessing about having this orgasm, it's not going to happen. Whereas if I just relax, calm down, just focus on like, I'm going to enjoy myself. A lot of the time you accidentally get there because you're not thinking about it. It's like, you, it's a weird sort of thing where if you don't think about a pink elephant, the pink elephant just kind of comes. Pun intended. Yeah, I agree with you about that. And women were just so like, so sensitive almost to the environment and to what's going yeah. on in our lives. Yep. that the more you can be in the moment, the better it is. Like, what's that quote? I think I said this when you were, we were talking before, like the, when you're in your head, you're dead. Yep. 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 And, and this is a weird, like most of my audience are male, just like I'm sure a lot of your audience are female. And so for a lot of my audience listening, because guys who haven't had a lot of experience with women, or maybe they've had a girlfriend, but they haven't like really, you know, explored femininity and what it's like to be a woman and all that kind of stuff they will hear this stuff about like oh it's hard for a woman to orgasm or women have a lot of insecurities in the bedroom or women are worried about performing for you and they'll go like what are you even talking about like guys are the ones that have performance anxiety and i keep like i'm gonna bring up this point so many millions of times for the rest of my life like women have performance anxiety it's not just guys you know who can't get an erection it's like women can't orgasm women want to feel pretty for you women worry that like they don't smell nice for you they don't look good enough for you maybe her eyebrows imogen's very she won't mind me saying this because she's talked about it. she's very insecure about her eyebrows she thinks that and like these are things that guys look at and we're like why are you insecure about that and i really like having someone like you on the podcast to give that feminine perspective because it kind of it's helpful to both genders if a woman's sitting there going like, oh my God, I'm struggling to orgasm, you remind her that like, well, he's probably stressed about getting an erection for you and doing a good job and vice versa. If a guy's worried about like, how do I perform? How do I look like a stud? It helps you to remind yourself in that moment, like she's probably nervous too. And is that something that you've dealt with like with your clients where you remind them like, hey, you can have that kind of talk and say to the person, look, I'm nervous. Are you nervous? Like, have you found that helpful for your clients? Bridging that gap? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I also think it's, I love how you say that, like they're both nervous. It's both a, yeah. you know, it's experience for both parties because it all goes back to what we were talking about earlier. Like porn makes it seem like we're both supposed to perform when that's <laughs> not true, right? Like it's just this experience. Yeah, perf I, I say it all the time. Porn is like theater and people look at it and think like, oh, okay, it has to be this big theatrical performance. And it's like, you don't go to the theater 
and watch them do these big grandiose lines and stuff like that and then think like oh i have to go home and like quote shakespeare to my girlfriend like you don't put yourself put that pressure on yourself when you watch theater or a movie you don't think okay that's not true some people do watch a movie and think like i have to be as smooth as james bond but for some reason porn we just look at porn and we go like that has to be me girls do it too I, I've, mm-hmm. I've been with and talked to a lot of women that say like, oh, I have to be moaning like crazy. I have to like look perfect. I have to, you know, shave and trim my area because all the girls in porn are clean shaven. Like I can't have any hair or anything like that. Like there's a, there's this performance that has to happen. And I think it's like porn has been amazing at liberating people, but it's also given this like really weird message of like, we all have to have sex like porn. And I think... I can't remember if we talked about it with you or if it was with the podcast with Georgie. I get everyone mixed up because I've done so many podcasts at this point. That's my Mm -hmm. excuse. It's not because I'm brain dead. And (laughs) we talked about, and I was going to talk about this with you, that people don't talk in porn. And it's like the weirdest thing. It's just like dead silence. And it's like they have to memorize, like they're, they're, they're somehow intuitively, and it's because they have a script, intuitively like knowing what the other person wants or needs and any of that. And that's not what sex is like in real life. Like, People got to talk during sex. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I also think too, it's what I always tell women is like the safer you feel in your body, the, the safer you're going to feel with your partner, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of guys put that pressure on themselves as well to like, oh, I have to make her comfortable. I have to make sure she's in a good mood. I have to do all that kind of stuff. I like, again, I'm going to bring it back. I really like that you kind of come at it from a more like responsibility point of view from the woman's side of things. Like, you know, obviously the stuff that you can help your partner with and stuff, but I I really do think it's like that saying, what's the saying with relationships? Uh, Something like you have to be a whole completed person before you like get into a relationship. Like you don't want to use the other person. You don't want to be half a person and they're half a person and you kind of combine and hope that that makes you both whole. That That's not the way that anyone should get into a relationship. And I like that you come at sex with the same sort of thing. Like you want to start working on yourself, start being okay with your body and then share. Yeah, yeah. No, that's very, very important. Yeah. Hmm. Plus, come on. Like I, I've had women tell me, oh, I can't stop pleasure. I hate my body. Ugh. And I'm like, okay. Well, then get How in the gym. How do you have sex? How do you have sex if you hate your they body? They don't. Okay. <laughs> so I'm saying, I... okay, well, then work on your health, right? Um, do affirmations. Do things to make you feel good in your body. Then work on the sexuality. I'm going to leave links to your videos and stuff like that. But I really like the topics you talk about because you talk about stuff that I don't talk about, right? Like mm-hmm. I could talk about it, but it's just not really relevant to like my audience. For the most part, my audience are like single guys or maybe guys in a relationship, but usually single guys who want to meet women, who want to have more sex, who want to do all that, who want to improve themselves. You are more mm-hmm. or a lot of your stuff is from the angle of like people who are already in relationships, which is something I don't deal with all that much. I don't talk about it all that much. Like. I'm almost excited in a weird way. I wish I could be like, and I should, I could branch out fine, but I wish I could be you for a day and like talk about the topics you talk about. Cause this is stuff like I get excited about. It's just not in my tiger audience. Like people who are already in a relationship and want more sex. Like I'm almost jealous in a weird way. Like I'm not jealous, but like, <laughs> yeah, I could, I could see myself yeah. getting really excited talking about the stuff you're talking about. Like you have this relationship. It's not going well. You want to like, break through all the cracks kind of like pull that exterior and that shell that they've both built up to protect themselves like how do we chip away at that how do we get you guys to start trusting each other because it is almost a trust thing if you're not having sex and you haven't for a long time you don't trust each other like by definition you don't trust them with your body or or to to keep you know to have a good time with you or to not hurt you or any of that sort of stuff like and that's the stuff i love chipping away at i i Mm. i'm really it's really exciting that you get to talk about that stuff i mean i could fine i'm not saying like but yeah you get what i mean like this is good stuff. Woo! No, I agree with you about that. This, this is what gets me fired up too. I don't know if you saw, I did an Instagram story, uh, maybe it was last week or the week before, on the fact that it just, it's so interesting studying this because I'm the same as you. How, and I, I told you this statistic, how 40% of American couples are sexless, which Which means I only still have- don't believe. I went and looked it up after you said that to me. And I'm just like, that's too many. That can't be real. And like every study it, I looked at, yeah, it seems to be true. And it's like, it how? seems to be real too. And, and then I talked to people in my industry and they say, yes. So I think it's either people maybe lie about how much sex they're having or I don't know, but it's either they, you know, sex list, right? Is sex once a month or less. And I also go to the fact that, listen, I don't judge those people. I always tell the men that reach out to me that are in sexless relationships, 
if it was a great experience for her, she'd want to do it more. Yeah, and vice versa. Like if you're yeah, both vice not versa. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you're only having sex once a month, it can't be good sex. No, I, I use this analogy all the time. I'm going to relate it to one night stands. And one, the concept of a one night stand, I see the appeal sometimes, like I see how it could be fun. But to me, it's like a weird concept. Because like, if the sex was good, wouldn't you want to do it again? That's like going to a restaurant, you have a really good meal, and then you just never go to that restaurant ever again. Like, that's a weird concept to me. And so if they're only having sex once a month, that can't be like the best sex ever. And, and that's a huge red flag to me. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I think that, you know, the people that I've talked about that are in those situations, one party maybe wants to work on it the other one doesn't you know the more i get into this work the more i realize that mm. you know women have just been programmed to be so repressed and have so much shame around their sexuality that if they don't do the work to work on that to let go of all that programming right mm. the religious programming the societal the ever all that a, a pro, uh programming around their body um then then it will dry up in their relationship and this is like cool stuff to talk about because I get to see it again. I get it so excited when I have like a woman on the podcast because I come at it from the other side of things. I see the guys who are sexually repressed and who think like, if I have sex, I'm using women. I'm a bad person. It's shallow. You know, if I, heaven forbid you even start talking about like an open relationship or even like casual dating or something like friends with benefits. So many guys are just like, that's evil. I can't do that. And like they have all these voices in their head saying like, this is bad. It's not even religious half the time. It's just like a societal thing. And so I can't oh, even wow, that's imagine. Weird. It seems weird to you, but like, wait, how again, many guys are? I thought that was a female thing. Guys deal with no, that. No, that's too? what I'm saying. That's why I love having a woman on the podcast because it's like we do we deal with the same stuff, but just from the other side. Yeah, yeah. And every single time, the other gender thinks like, "Oh, but I didn't know your gender had to deal with that." And then it's like, that's why I love meeting in the middle. And it's like we're going through the same crap that you guys are going through. You just like never actually got together and talked and like actually said like, "Wait, are you repressed?" Yeah, I'm repressed too. Wait, do you think that like sex is bad? Yeah, I think it's bad too. Holy crap! Like. Why do we never talk about this? That's why I get so excited when yeah. I have a woman here. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Yeah, and listen, I think, you know, we talked about that when you were on my podcast. I personally yeah. think that that programming is bad for both genders because yeah, for sure. like, come on, like there are periods where maybe you do want a casual relationship. There are periods where you want an open, you know, whatever it is, it doesn't matter to me what dynamic you're in, but I think that it's so individual. People need to decide for themselves. Yep. Yep. And, and we're really talking about self repression here. Cause you just said like, sometimes you will want a casual relationship. Sometimes you will want something serious. If in the moments where you think like, Oh, I just want to explore myself a little bit. Maybe I'm young. Maybe I'm like 20 or something. And I want to explore my sexuality. If you think that that's bad, you're now telling yourself when I want something, it's like a lot of the time that's bad for me to want that. So therefore, because I have these urges, I'm a bad person for having these urges. I'm bad. There's something wrong with me. I shouldn't want this. So there's something inside me. It's almost like this puritanical, you know, self-repression. I, I shouldn't have these feelings and emotions. Like I don't feel, I don't think that's a good thing to be bottling up. I think if you go through life saying like, if I have this urge or this thing that I want to try or something that's fun, I'm bad for wanting that. It's like, isn't that a bad habit to be building up? What happens if then later on you say like, I want to make a lot of money or something? No, that's bad. Money's evil. No, that's bad. You're teaching yourself that you're not allowed to have the things that you want. <laughs> mm, what you just said is so powerful. Yes. And obviously I have a podcast episode on this, the connection between sex and money. I want to do another one on the topic because you're right about that. And then people have so much trauma around money too. Oh my God, I want to make more money, but oh, I don't want to be, you know, like, I don't want to be seen as greedy or selfish or whatever. But yeah. like the more I've learned about this, and obviously I'm sure you can relate to this, the more money you make, the more you can give. This is okay. Let's segue into the whatever. We'll just, this is going to be a messy podcast. I love it like this. Let's segue into money <laughs> then, because like what you just said, yes, absolutely. You have no idea how much effort it has taken me over the last like probably three years to even be okay with saying, I want to make some money. Like I just had this weird, like pure, almost puritanical, uh, like, feelings towards money like i'm a bad person i'm using my audience i'm supposed to be helping people and it doesn't help that sometimes someone will come in and say like why are you charging money i thought you cared about people and you're like oh no please don't that's like a woman just getting in touch with her body and then someone comes along and says you're a slut it's like you kind of get reset back to zero and then you have to build yourself back up again so i really want to talk about this topic because you're right people do at the mention of money a lot of people get really icky and they're like oh why are you using your audience and it's like because then i can help my audience 
If I have enough money to pay the bills, I can do this full time. If I have more, I can hire a video editor. If I have more, I can move to a better apartment where I can do more content. If I have more, like there's this weird notion that as you earn more money, you must just be buying stupid crap. And it's like what I've found with content creators and coaches like yourself, most people just reinvest, uh, reinvest it straight back into what they're doing. You might be earning $10,000 a month or something. That's all getting poured back into making better content. Like you don't walk away with $10,000 a month. And I think that's a weird like notion that people have. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up too. Like this past weekend, that's why I was just kind of chilling before you and I got on this call. Mm -hmm. I was in an NLP conference the past Ooh. two days. That's all done. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, you're right. It's you either invest it. Like I've invested in my personal growth so I can give more or yeah. into other resources. So I yeah. think that that's really important. Yeah. It's, we could have a whole topic about like the virtue of selfishness and that like, if you, I really, you would, you would, I'm going to pander to you here. You would love it. I call that self-love, like looking after yourself. Like you're not being selfish. You're taking care of yourself. So then you can take care of other people. Like, is this something that women in particular really, that you think women struggle with? Because I'm going to, I'm going to say like guys struggle with it too, but I just want to hear from you. Do women struggle to like give themselves that self-love and be like a little selfish? Yeah. You know, it's funny too. Like I have a friend group now that we're all into personal development nice. and like we're in all this. So it's, mm -hmm. it does not weird for you know, girlfriend to say, Hey, let's do a girl's day where we go pamper ourselves with like a manicure, pedicure and mm -hmm. like lunch or something. But I think that I used to feel like, Oh man, you, maybe I haven't achieved enough for me to do those kind of days. Yeah. Like I haven't earned it. I haven't been good enough. I haven't worked hard enough. Yeah. And it's like, you're just going to keep moving those goalposts. Like you will achieve your goal. I've done this myself a million times. You'll achieve your goal. And then you go like, nah, I can't relax yet and have fun and look after myself because I got to earn more. I, I got to try harder. And then you'll hit that next goal and then you'll be like, nah, it's still not time. And it's like, at some point, you got to just take a break and say like, well, am I going to keep procrastinating my happiness or am I just going to enjoy my life right now? Like in this moment, because I've only got one life. Like, do I want to keep Yes, waiting? Andy. And that's what the NLP lady told me today. She was like, so many people do that. And I think mm. that, you know, we're kind of in this new age of society, which is really exciting where people are really questioning the beliefs, right? Yep. Uh, yep. huh do i want to be sexually repressed mm -hmm. oh what does what does a fulfilling sex life for me look like not mm -hmm. society me mm -hmm. you know does it look like sex dates does it look like experimenting sexually you know different sexual genres what does it mm -hmm. look like for me not other people i'm not having sex with them i'm having sex with me and my partner or maybe another person but it's between us yeah yeah i think the internet i think websites like yours and podcasts like yours um i guess stuff like mine as well it gives you almost that like permission to experiment. And I think that's what like, if as I go through a lot of your videos, it's almost like every video you're giving people permission. You're like, you're allowed to like yourself. You're allowed to explore your sexuality. You even have on your Instagram, you post this a lot on your Instagram. I can't remember the exact wording, but you're basically saying like, orgasms are okay, essentially. Like you got to have an orgasmic life. You use the word orgasm all the time. And it's almost like you're giving people permission. And I think I'm doing the same thing. I can't tell you how many people have emailed me and said like, you know, I feel like it's okay for me to want to explore my sexuality because you did it. And I think the internet's really helped with that. Like giving people permission. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I follow a woman in my industry and she's like, I want to be <laughs> so funny. My friend and I were laughing about the way this woman phrased it. She said, I want to be well fucked and earning 50 months. <laughs> and I was like, "Woo, man, I was like, Whoa, that's empowering because so many women in our society, it's like they pride themselves in being I'm burned that I'm so burned out and I'm also successful. It's like, girlfriend, why are you bragging about being tired? <laughs> Again, this is like, this is where I'm going to come at it and say like, yeah, all the men, uh, same thing. Like you get the same thing from the other side, the men, same thing. Like they'll, they'll burn themselves out. What I get is guys who are, in their thirties who come to me and say like, I just realized that it's a problem that I've spent the last 10 years focused so intently on my career that I have zero friends and zero relationships. And I've even had a couple of guys that are virgins in their thirties. And they're like, shit, I thought I was supposed to sacrifice and just go crazy and just like focus only on career. And like, I got to a point where I'm earning like $200,000 US a year. So I'm doing pretty decent for myself, but like, I have no friends. Was I, was I supposed to make friends? And it's like, yeah, like you don't get to the end of your life and someone gives you a big tick because you sacrificed the most. 
that's not i i don't feel like that's a happy life now sacrifice can help for sure i make a lot of sacrifices you clearly do like you do have to sacrifice for a lot of your goals but sacrifice itself should not be the goal you don't get a pat on the back certainly not from me and i'm sure not from you because you hurt yourself i see sacrifice a lot of the time as you hurting yourself like you're just cracking that whip and expecting yeah i agree with you about that and i think that there's such a misconception about that in the entrepreneurial personal development space that people are starting to see through of like yeah entrepreneurs for sure for sure like and that was me i i've i've written articles about how much i hurt myself and i called it hustling at the time and it's like i think i'm just beating myself up like getting like five hours sleep writing like working a full-time job and just writing articles at the job i'm glad i did that stuff for sure but like i think i had to do that in order to get to a more nuanced place now where it's like no 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 i need to have a little like me time it sounds like hilarious to call it me time especially a guy saying like i need some me time that's normally a woman thing but like you need some freaking me time i say this to so many of my clients call it recharging your batteries if you want to you have to go and like relax a little bit you can't be like cracking that whip 24 7 or you you get burnout like yeah no listen i gave one of my guy friends for his birthday a massage nice i was like you gotta go get you know go relax <laughs> that's i've only ever had one massage in my life and i think Okay, this is another thing where the genders, it's going to be hilarious when we talk about the genders, because I know that you're going to say that like a lot of women, you know, really struggle to give themselves me time and relax. A lot of guys do too. Like from my point of view, I'm biased. So I'd say like, no, guys struggle with that more. I'm sure you'd say like, no, they don't. Women struggle with it more. But like, I see so many guys who've like never had a massage in their life. Like I was one of them. I had my first massage like six months ago. And I was like, why have I never done this before? This is like, and I kept feeling guilty the entire time. I was like, I should be writing something. I should be working. I should be doing a podcast. Why am I enjoying this? Like my audience needs me. And I'm just lying there feeling like I'm in heaven. And it was almost like this weird, I had to have like a weird breakdown almost. I was like, do I deserve to feel this good? And it was like the weirdest question ever. I was like, am I allowed to feel this good? Do I deserve this? And then I was like, maybe I do. Like, I'm clearly deserving this. Like I'm clearly experiencing this right now. So I must deserve it on some level. But yeah, it was a weird like, breakdown almost yeah and i think oh my god i'm glad you brought that up because you're right i do think that sometimes i do hear this cry from the, and obviously I, mean, I want to become more gender you know whatever in my post about the fact that like men and women are going through the same thing which you're this conversation is confirming mm -hmm. but i think that you're right that is so so key because i see that a lot in corporate where the guys just completely let themselves go yeah and then because my dad just retired from his um last year and I see so many guys around my dad, like my dad's in great shape, killing it, you know? And I see so many of these guys that are just his age that have a heart, had had a heart attack and just like yeah. barely making it. And it's yeah. like, that sucks. Cause they, they put, you know, they provided for their family and they did so well financially, but the health was like. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. And it's almost like a, I think it's a very, Okay, from my point of view, it feels like a masculine value, but I'm sure, like, I know enough women that do the same thing. So I don't think it is a masculine value. I think what I'm trying to say is when guys do it, they pretend that it's a masculine value. And then when women do it, they pretend that it's a feminine value. This idea of self-sacrifice. Men definitely do it. They're like, I, I got to be a cog in the machine. I got to be the breadwinner. I got to sacrifice and carry everything on my back and look after, you know, the family. Women do the same thing where they're like, I got to sacrifice for my kids. I got to be a good wife and that kind of stuff. I see so many guys that do that. And they think, I, again, like I said before, they think if I get to the end of my life and I've sacrificed the most, then I'm the best person. And it's like, maybe, but you've just broken your back in the meantime and you've lost like 20 years that you could have had with your kids and your kids aren't really that close to you because and your wife isn't because you kind of ignored them for the last like 30 or 40 years. Women do the same thing. Like it's this sac self-sacrifice, this almost like a fetish. People have a fetish with self-sacrifice. Like they really do. It's like they're cracking the whip going like, oh my God, I'm such a good person. Ah, oh, ah, oh, yes. And it's like, you're just hurting yourself, buddy. Like what? You got to enjoy your those life. Those are those old bit. beliefs of the, I don't even know where they came from. I guess puritanical society. Is that where they yeah, came from? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I don't know what, but we are so deep seated in that BS. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I've been, you know, I was at that conference all weekend and we went really went through like really questioning different beliefs. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy because most of the beliefs we believe aren't even ours, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're social creatures. We kind of just fit in with, and fair enough, we kind of have to in order to survive. But I think like you said, we're getting to this almost like a renaissance, like this period where we're like, mm -hmm. yeah, wait, yeah. is everything that I think I know, is that all false? Do I have to throw that out? And I think that it's clearly what you're talking about with half of your videos and stuff. And it's what I've tried to do. I've even done a video where I 
I think I called it like society is lying to you about everything all the time. And it's obviously like a clickbait title, but like I went through like a hundred things that people think, like I literally read out like a hundred topics that people think are true that are not true. And I was like, there you go. There's like, a, if anything on this list rang true with you and you're like, oh my God, I used to think that was true. There you go. Now you have to go away and kind of think about everything else. Think about like, I'm not saying the entire fabric of reality is wrong or something, but you do want to do what you said, which is just sit down and figure out like, what do I want? What kind of sex life do I want? What kind of financial life do I want? What, what kind of like health do I want? Like, who do I want to be almost? I don't have to be the person that society tells me I have to be. Mm, I so agree with you about that. And that's how people laugh, but I'm always like schedule a sex date. And they're like, I'm like, do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, you're right about that. I love that you did that video. I'll have to look at that. That's hilarious. Because yeah, that's like, like when I told- hour of ranting about everything that's <laughs> wrong. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, I love it. I think that's hilarious because I'm on a similar path. And I think that, um, you know, it all is different for everybody. Right. But like it all for me is not working 15 hour days. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. maybe working five. Yep. And then I have time to go hiking, lunch yep. with a girlfriend, call yep. my mom. Maybe you go on a date that night. Right. Yep. yep. I think most people want to move towards that as well. Working less. That's always been my mission. I think I would be most happy if I was working like, I think I said ages ago, like years ago, I was like, I'd be happy working four hours a day, five days a week. Like that would just be heaven for me, like four hours. And then the rest of it, you get to enjoy your life. And that would all, the, the times I have made myself do that, where I make myself have a break or I make myself go on a road trip, which I have to like force myself, like brutally force myself. I have to go and have a two hour discussion with myself and say like, no, it's okay. I'm allowed to do this. But when I do, I come back and make better content. I come back and help people. It's like you have more love to give. You're in a better position mm. to help other people. Yeah, you fill yourself up and then you can give. Like, think about it. I'm on fire and it just feels super fabulous from those two days. Even though during yeah. it, I was like. Yeah. I, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I just did a video. It'll come out. It would have already been out by the time I released this one. I, I did it like a couple of days ago about like, it was called Tinder Burnout. And I was specifically talking about guys who are on Tinder and they're not having the results they want. They get frustrated, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't really matter that it wasn't, it doesn't have to specifically be about Tinder. I guess I was just talking about self-improvement burnout where you have a goal and you're trying really hard to achieve it and you get to a point of burnout. And one of the things I said is just take a fucking break. Just go away for two days, go to the beach, go to the woods, go sit and meditate. This is something I've had to do. I did it yesterday. I just went and sat in a park for like two hours. I was feeling really stressed, really down. I just sat there and I kind of like put my phone away and I just thought like, no, I'm going to recharge my batteries. I want to go home right now. I want to run home and do a podcast or do an email or do something. I'm going to force myself to sit here, even though I don't want to, and just enjoy. And those two hours where I sat there, oh my God, that was magical. And like, sometimes you do have to schedule this stuff. You have to force yourself. Like you said, a, a date night or a sex night. Like you have to make yourself do it. I, or come on, for the single people listening, do it sex day with yourselves. Like, oh my I mean, God, what would if that I was in a relationship, like? what would I do? Jerking off. What? what would that look like? What's a sex date with yourself? Well, it's, it's really like, I think that people, maybe like a full body massage or something. I like that. Or like, I like it could be, a, a, for the guys listening, like you give yourself a massage. Or I you, like that. I don't know, just do something to like, you know, for women, maybe I'm always thinking women to be like a breast massage or something, you know. I mean, guys, you or can massage your something. breast. It just doesn't feel like anything. It's like, not <laughs> yeah, yeah, guys, it's kind of <laughs> weird. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think that that's just so, so important because the more we give to ourselves, the more we can give to other people in the mm -hmm. sense of, um, you know, we're, we're talking about the same thing with the sense of sexuality and with money. Yeah. And I always like think about, man, think about if everybody was overflowing with sexual energy in a healthy way mm -hmm. and they were fulfilled, like really tuned in financially, yep. the world would look so much different. Yeah. You'd have more to give. And I really like, again, this is going to be one of those things where my male audience will go like, wait, this is so surprising that women talk about the same thing. I did an article and it was a really long article called how getting laid makes you a better man. And I was basically talking about fulfilling your sexual needs and how that makes you nicer to women, nicer to your friends. You have more to give. You can focus on your other goals. You're a happier person. You will want to take care of your health. Like, like all that stuff. You just have more to give. And so it's going to be hilarious to my audience listening to you talk about the exact same thing that you have to do with women. You have to tell women like, hey, you need to handle your sexual needs and, and handle your intimacy needs and stuff like that so that you have more to give. And again, we're going to bring it back to this puritanical thing. I think that people think that having sex is bad. Being in touch with your sexual energy is bad. Like it's just, it's bad. And there's never a reason. 
I, I don't get why there's I get why there's a reason back in the day. Maybe it wouldn't benefit an old society if you go out and have sex with everyone because we didn't have contraceptives and we didn't have STD treatments. And like there wasn't I think it's just the contraceptive thing, honestly. That's probably the biggest turning mm, point. No, no, no. Um, it's a form to control people. If you want yeah, to control why? someone, why? control but their why? sexual energy. But why? I guess that's why I'm asking. Like, why did they want what to control What do you mean people? why? Look at society now. It's swimming in control. It's one of the reasons why <sighs> okay, my, my friend and I were talking about this earlier. I don't watch TV or the news. Yeah, neither And if do I. now <laughs> when I do watch the news, like when I'm home visiting my parents in Alabama, I look at the news and I'm like, it puts people automatically in a fight or flight state in a fear, you know? And, uh, and my mom's like, oh my God, the virus is getting bad again. I'm like, mom, no, it's not. You are watching the news and they're putting you in a fear state. So yeah. Yeah. So it's almost like I've just asked a naive question. I'm saying to you, it's like I've said, why, why did they control? And you're like, well, because control is the goal in the first place. Yeah. I'm yeah. saying like, no, but no, no. why control? It's like, well, because they want to control. Like, so yeah. Yeah. No, no, listen, listen. I think that um, obviously, I mean, you and I know this. I mean, come on, we can look at the fact that like corn is for free, right? Yeah. But, sell the, but, sell, give the crack away for free and then charge for it, yeah. It's not even that. Make porn for free, but never educate people on what they really need to know. <laughs> mm. That doesn't teach anything. Yeah. Like yeah. communication needs, boundaries, um, like all of that Fantasies, stuff. fetishes. Yeah. 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 I get the feeling, we won't ramble about this too much, but I get the feeling watching porn that it's more about like, it's this weird middle ground where there's someone watching, aka you, the viewer, and so the porn actors, again, it's like theater, they're both performing for you, but you almost aren't cognizant of that. You're almost not aware that they are performing for you. So it's not mm -hmm. about the woman and her pleasure. It's not about the guy and his pleasure. It looks like it is. It's this weird version that looks like it is that, but no, they're performing for you. They're trying to get you off, but you're not present there. So it's like this weird detached from reality thing where the two people are performing for one person, not for each other. Whereas when you go and watch a movie or something, there's a cog there's a coherent story and they're acting for each other. They're, they're characters in that movie. They, they almost don't, yes, I know a movie is for the people watching, but Hollywood movies, it's a weird thing, but they almost don't give a shit that you're watching. I know they do because they're trying to make money. Whereas porn is like, they only care that you're watching. Like it is literally to get you off. And so it's this weird thing where the two people are like almost robotic. They're not that into each other. They're not even pretending. I know amateur porn is different, fine. But like, we're talking about normal porn productions. It's this weird, like we're going to pretend that you're not watching, but we all know that you secretly are watching, but you almost don't even know that you're watching. Like you don't know that they're performing for you. You think that they're having sex with each other and getting off on each other, but they're not. Like, absolutely, they're not. Yeah, it's a waste of energy. Hmm. No, I agree with you on that. And I think that it's very, very interesting, right? And it's very, very weird. And that's why sites like Make Love Not Porn, you don't have to post that below. It's a great um, make alternative to I'm make, add that to uh, alternative to, what is it? It's an alternative to mainstream porn. Yeah. So it's like more amateur. I know you brought it up but for those listening. Mm -hmm. You brought it up on the podcast that Imogen and I went on on your podcast. But it's more like an amateurish porn, like actual couples and actual people having sex. Yeah, I've seen a lot of like videos like that. And the first time you watch it, you kind of like watch it and you go like, well, this isn't that exciting because the usually, and I'm assuming this one is the same. The first bit is them talking. Like they'll talk about their kinks, their fetishes, what they want to try, what they're into, stuff like that. And then they'll get down to business and actually have the fun. And then a lot of the time afterwards, they'll go like, how was that for you? Yeah, that was fun. That was cool. I liked this. We should try this next time. And like, it's not as glamorous because you're cutting out like, or you're adding extra stuff and you're not just yeah. like skipping straight to the like, oh, I want to see the sex part. But like, it's a good template. Guys listening, go and watch some of this stuff. Like this like amateurish porn. Another decent one is there's a website called abbywinters.com. It's an Australian website. They talk about, it's the same thing. It's like they talk beforehand, they have sex, then they talk afterwards. Go and watch that stuff. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because that's a decent way to have sex normally. Like beforehand, that's kind of what a lot of my audience do anyway. They'll go on a date. Hey, what stuff are you into? What stuff have you tried? Have you ever tried toys? Have you ever tried this and that? Then they'll have sex and then afterwards they'll cuddle in bed afterwards and be like, oh, that was so much fun. Like, what did you like in that? That's kind of normal sex, but it doesn't really get shown in porn. It's like we skip everything except like the penis goes into the vagina. And it's kind of weird, like you said. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, most women, what is it like that study that says like the average woman takes like 20 to 40 minutes to get like really turned on? Mm-hmm. So I think that they skip all of that. And she's like, they're like, oh, she's ready. It's like, yeah, mm, yeah. we don't know. <laughs> Maybe she's yeah. not. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. funny. Let's segue into a little bit about, I, I want to backtrack to something that you mentioned like half an hour or so ago about you said you have a lot of friends in your life that are into the same sort of stuff as you like self-improvement stuff like that i can't i don't think you said the word self-improvement but that kind of like general gist do you think that that's been something that's massively helped you and i'll, I'll quickly give my insight for me like that's been a godsend i i don't think i could have done anything unless i had friends who were also into like making themselves better people so how has that helped you yes and to be totally honest with you i'm always looking for more people that are on this path you know, we forget <laughs> not everybody's on this. Um, yeah, because we have such yeah, a weird so, bubble, don't we? Very true, especially yeah. when you add in the sexuality component. Mm-hmm. People are like, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, that already makes us <laughs> unicorns. But no, the, the friend piece is very, very huge. And I think that that's why getting in masterminds, getting in group programs, getting in Facebook groups of people mm-hmm. that are doing it is so, so important. Yeah even like forums and stuff like that. Like the guys on my forums are all great. Um, I myself have a telegram group. Telegram's like WhatsApp and like mm-hmm. there's like eight of us in this group and we're all talking about like making money, improving our bodies, you know, stuff like that. A couple of them are talking about coaching and, and stuff like similar to what I do. And like that has been a godsend. Guys listening right now, I would not have done everything I've done without that group. Like I'm telling you, that's a freebie right now that you get. Go and make a similar group. Go and either join a similar group, make a similar group, look for people. You can go and meet up if you want to and join like entrepreneur groups or go to masterminds, go to seminars, go to forums. Uh, go on, just go outside and ask random people like, yo, do you want to improve yourself? Like it doesn't matter. Just like literally you need to start seeking out people who also want to make themselves better. And I guess maybe you would agree with this. It's, it's not even that they want to make themselves better. It's almost like they're an optimistic person. Like there's some, it's some, you're looking for something like that, that they think the world is good and that could be better. It's something like that. They want to make themselves better or they want to make the world better, or they're just optimistic. And I think, you know what I'm talking about. I'm just not phrasing it very well because it's not. Yeah. What I also want to say is, is that when we're networking groups in your city, that's really useful. I also want to say that when you're, when you do get on this path and you start vibrating at a higher frequency, you will automatically attract people that are on that on that level, right? Because yes. like attracts like. And and if I can interrupt, you scare away anyone who's not. You terrify them. They hate you. And so that's, and that's like okay. a good thing. Yeah, that's a good yeah. thing. Because like nothing against those people, but they're probably not going to add to your life. And hence you want to look for people who will. And you're right, it is kind of like a magnet thing. Like because I mean, same with you. If you like, why are we having this conversation? Because I like, I looked at your videos and I was like, oh my God, I love this woman. Like she's, she's doing like, you know what I mean? She's trying to make herself better. We can segue into, there was an Instagram post that you did. You had like a before picture and an after picture of you. I'll show it on the screen. The before picture, like you're overweight. You talked about you were depressed. Like you were doing a corporate job you didn't like. And then the after picture is like you now. You obviously look like much healthier and stuff. I saw that post and that was the post where I was like, okay, I really like her. I really want her. I want to go on her podcast and I really want her to come on mine. Like that, Mm -hmm. when you're, you called it operating on a high, vibrating on a higher frequency, which is something like Joe Rogan would say. I love that kind of stuff, but it is true. It is like you're, you're at a higher level. You're paying more attention. You're more observant of yourself. You're more self-aware. You're paying more attention to your outside. You're turning off the TV and Netflix and all that crap and not just being a zombie. Like you are actually... I call it like you're more in tune with the world around you, like vibrating at a higher frequency, fine, whatever you want to call it. But when you get to that point, you start taking yourself more seriously. You start deciding, I want to be better. I want the world to be better. I want to make a good change on the world. I I want to have a positive impact. You do just start noticing other people. Like I saw that post of yours and I'm like, okay, no, this is, yep. She's on the same path as me. Like she's trying to make herself a better person. You just, you can see those people. You only need like five seconds of them and you can just see them and you're like, okay, no, I get it. This person wants to be better and wants everyone else to be better. And that's what you're talking about with like being a magnet. Yeah, and definitely. And I want to tell people too, like you're already a magnet anyway. You are always, you're always magnetizing people, places, things to you and repelling. So you might as well do it consciously, right? (laughs) Yeah. 
I really like that. I really like that because I talk about that as I call it like self-fulfilling prophecy or another article I've written is you get what you subconsciously desire. So if you're walking around thinking that the world is miserable and everybody hates you, or here's a better example. If you're a woman and you think that guys are all just like horrible and they're all like fuck boys and they all just want to have sex. Or if you're a guy and you think that women just want your money and they just want to use you, guess what? You're going to get that because anyone who's not that, any guy who's a decent, nice guy, you will start talking to him and he'll just pick up on that hatred for him. And you'll be looking for, you know, him wanting to use you for sex. And when he doesn't do that and you keep looking for it, at some point he'll just be like, why do you keep vilifying me? I'm not a bad person. Why do you keep thinking I am? And vice versa, if you're a guy who thinks that women are all bad and they're just out to manipulate you and they're all lies and manipulators and all that kind of crap. The nice women will be like, why do you keep thinking that I'm a bad person? I'm not. Stop looking for something that isn't there and she'll leave. And then all you are left with is the people who are the thing that you're worried that they are and they will just hide it from you or they'll just openly go like, yeah, of course I want your money. Like, why wouldn't I? Of course I'm going to manipulate you. Why wouldn't I? So you really do get, it's not some like hippie magic thing. We're not saying like, oh, it's like, you know, energy and vibrations and all that kind of stuff like you literally do get the thing that you think in your head because you scare off anyone who's not that and you bring anyone who is yes and that's why i'm so thankful for the friend group that i have now is like i'll have pe i have um and i expect that people call me in on this yeah where hey you're vibrating a lower frequency you're being really negative like what's going on so that you can work on that to then continue growing how does that conversation normally go? Like, like, okay. Cause, cause I have the, this is again, where I'm so glad that you're a woman and that like, I'm sure you're glad you're a woman too. <laughs> but like, mm -hmm. This one, I'm so glad that you're on here. My friendship groups, the same thing. Like if one of us is, is just, we call it like action faking sometimes where you're like pretending that you're taking positive action, but you're really just faking it. Like you're just wasting time and stuff like that. And we also talk about like being too negative and, and letting yourself get dragged down rather than focusing on, we also call it being too passive. You're just saying like, oh, it's not my fault. Every, I can't do anything rather than being assertive and saying like, no, no, no. What can I change right now? What can I do to have a, a positive step in the right direction? When we call each other out on that, we're always like really thankful. And sometimes we don't like to hear it and we'll go like, no, shut up. Like, that's not true. But five minutes later, we'll be like, thank you for saying that. How does that go in your female friendship circles? Because the stereotype is that women don't like to be blunt with each other and can't call each other out and have to say nice platitudes and no, you're beautiful as you are and all that kind of stuff. How does that bluntness, how does it work in a female friendship? I guess what is what I'm saying. Do you have mm. to be nicer or do you just be blunt? Or the, or the stereotype is women are catty and don't want to Yeah, passive aggressive. Yeah. Which they, I think yeah. is BS because it depends on like, I'm, to be honest with you, it's a very small group of us. Yep. Three of us. Yeah, so is mine. Mine's like eight people. Yeah. Yeah. And so I do think that I, I, I'm setting the intention for people listening that you have someone in your life, at least one person that can do this with you. It is yep. very important to have someone that's very real that can call you out on your crap. But for women, it's the same thing, right? Like, hey, uh, you keep saying you're going to work out. You don't. Yeah. Okay. So you are that blunt. Yeah, we are. Like my okay. friend today, okay. I, I was talking to her and she said, she said, you know, it's been two years and I keep saying I'm going to leave my corporate job for my side hustle. And I was like, yeah, you do. What's going on? I love that. Yeah. It's that's not a same. mean thing. It's like a, hey, I really care about you. Like what's going on? It's a love thing. It's a, it's almost yeah. like I'm not going to keep watching you hurt, hurt, maybe hurt's a strong word, but like, I'm not going to keep watching you neglect yourself. Like mm -hmm. you told me this stuff was important to you. You're not doing it. Like I, I want to help you with this. Like you are essentially, and I use this all the time. This is how I like blackmail my friends into doing something. I'll say like, bro, you're hurting my friend. Like, that's not okay. Like, I, I can't let you hurt my friend. Yeah, the friend is yourself. You're hurting yourself, fine. But like, I'm not going to stand by and just let someone bully my friend. Like, I'm going to step in. Dude, you're bullying yourself. I, I do the same thing when people are too hard on themselves. I say like, stop bullying my friend. Like, that's fucked up what you're doing. I, I wouldn't let some other stranger bully you the way that you're bullying yourself. So stop it. Start looking after yourself. I'm really surprised yeah, that yeah. you're that blunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, like and, and think of, well, come on, we should be. I mean, yeah. I, it really hit me this year, like the fact that life goes by really fast, you know? And I think that, especially yeah. last year, like last year really sideswiped everybody because of what happened. Yeah. And so if, like this year, people are like, whoa, I really want to, you know, accomplish my goals and really get out there and kill it. Yeah. Yeah, I did a, I did a podcast that was very blunt 
uh, a couple of weeks ago called something like because america and especially the uk certain states in america but like the uk had started slowly opening up and coming out of lockdowns mm-hmm. and so i did the, the the title was lockdowns are over you've been a giant pussy and like essentially i was trying to yell at people and say like you to, 2020 was a write-off fine what are we going to do in 2021 and sometimes i think you need that blunt kind of energy you can't always be like mr nice guy or mrs Haley, nice girl like you do have to kind of be it's not even an asshole, but it's like cruel to be kind. It's honestly kind. Yeah, no, I agree with you about that. And I also think um, it's kind of like, you know, David Goggins. Yeah. Everybody, yeah, bring, yeah. my audience are obsessed with him because he's like hyper masculine yeah, yeah. and yeah. And, and I think sometimes he can be a little much, right? But I do think <laughs> in the context of what we're speaking, that's good, right? I mean, yeah. look at where he was, 300 pounds to where he is now. Everybody knows that. Like a lot of times I'll be like, oh my God, I need to get in like Goggins mode and like, let's go. Yeah. Another good guy who's exactly the same sort of energy is Jocko Willink. I don't know if you know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, he's a little less intense than Goggins, but he's got that like deep, that, that voice where you're like, I'm about to be murdered. Like if you heard that voice behind you, you're like, I'm, I'm dead in five seconds. Like that, this big Hulk is going to snap my neck, but he's such a sweet Yeah. Guy. But I also think in terms of a, a professional point of view, that kind of guy is the guy that gets the girls. Cause yeah. I see, wow, very disciplined, masculine, successful. Let's segue that. That's a perfect segue into something that we briefly mentioned when we came on your podcast, which was this idea of, or this stereotype that women don't care that much about appearance. Like, let's dive into that, seeing as though you've just brought up Goggins. Because that's a weird stereotype. I don't think the guys in my community believe that, but there are so many guys that, like, you try and help, and they just go, like, why should I go to the gym? Why should I lose weight? Like, women don't really care about that stuff. Mm. Like, so do women care about appearance? Give me a second, it got dark here. Um, nice. Okay, you're saying the stereotype in terms of the fact that what... Uh, that men are taught that their their looks don't matter, right? Don't don't matter anywhere near as much, if at all. Some guys believe like it literally doesn't matter. Like Yeah, I think that's women BS aren't they do. To... Yeah. Because like I look at man, now the lights are so bright. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I look at looks in terms of the fact that like it is a sign of vitality and health. It's not a it, like it's not a it's maybe not even a sexual like attraction way, but when I'm first meeting someone, I'm thinking, oh, wow, they're really healthy. That's a very attractive. And not even just that. It's, it's, it's a real, it's your resume. It's your cover letter. It's the first thing that people see and first impressions do matter. I'm sorry, but they do. And if Mm -hmm. I see someone that's really overweight or they don't dress themselves very well, or they don't like trim their beard, they just have it like scraggly and crap like that. What I think is you don't care about yourself. So why should, like, you don't take yourself seriously. Why should I take you seriously? It's almost like a sign of self-respect when you work on your appearance, when you put some effort in. And we're not talking about being gods here. You don't have to be the world's biggest superstar. Though if you get there, awesome. And definitely aim for that if you want to. Same as a woman. You don't have to look like a supermodel, but you have to look like you care. You have to look like you tried. You have to look like you put in some some effort. And before you stepped out of the house, you thought about yourself. No, I respect myself and I want to look semi-decent. That's a low bar. I want to look decent. I want to look good. Okay, there you go. That's a better bar. I want to look good. And I want everyone else to see that, like, I actually care. And you put, you take that time, you put that effort in. And sometimes it can take a little while. Fine. If you've got a lot of weight to lose, that'll take a while. It took me like nine months to lose most of my weight. Then when you go outside, it's like people will see, oh, this person respects themselves. Cool. I'll take them seriously. Did you find that when you were, because your, your before and after is quite dramatic, honestly, like, and you'd look way happier in the after. Did you find that people were nicer to you? Like the world treated you differently? Yeah, I think people can sense your energy, right? Like even now, like the more and more work I do on myself, I get different responses. So yeah, I get what you're saying. I also think it's like the better you take care of yourself, the better opportunities you get. Yeah, it all comes back to like handling your own needs first and then you have more to give to other people. I think that has to be the key takeaway of this podcast is like work on yourself, like love yourself. You want to say that. And for guys listening, uh, there'll be a bunch of guys that hear me say that and they're like, oh, that's gay. But like, fine, I'll say it in a masculine way. Give a shit (laughs) about yourself. There you go. Give a shit. Ladies, love yourself. Guys, give a shit about yourself. There you go. That's super masculine. Now you don't have to say that it's gay. 
my god you're so funny no yeah i think it's it's like come on you know we live in a society that's so politically correct and all that bs but at the end of the day everybody's seeking the same thing we all want love and connection healthy relationships and the foundation of that is our relationship with ourselves mm -hmm. mm. let's do a slight segue how have you found i want i want to jump back to the topic of like sexuality and puritanicism i'm sure that's not a word that i just made up puritanicalism <laughs> yeah i don't know what the noun is but but like people being uncomfortable talking about sex and money as well but particularly sex like have you always been comfortable with your sexuality like we're talking about it because i sure as hell have not no that's been over the past five years okay. but to be honest the more comfortable i get the more i feel like how was I not ever this comfortable? Because yeah. we we come from sex. It's what everybody wants. People want more of it. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's very odd to me. Yeah. Yeah, do you not think it's strange as hell that there's this like need that we all have, like sex and intimacy and pleasure and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But like most people don't talk about it. And it, when you really start paying attention, you... I say this to Imogen all the time. I'll say, how come I go on YouTube and any video that's about sex is like 18, you know, restricted to 18. You can't have any nudity or anything like that on YouTube. Yeah, I can Google at any point in time or I can search on YouTube, two guys smashing the crap out of each other, beating the crap blood. I can go and watch the UFC on TV, like no issues whatsoever. Children can watch that, like no issues whatsoever. Why are we so strange around the topic of sex? And we treat it like it's this weird taboo thing like oh my god you're gonna get an std if you kiss each other or you know you're gonna break hearts and stuff like that if you hold hands. like i don't even know what the puritanism it, it's almost just like this weird fear of sex and it's completely unfounded and just like you yeah i used to have this weird thing around sex where i couldn't even talk about it and now that i look back i'm like why was i so weird i don't have a reason other than just because everybody else was is that it is it just because everybody else is weird yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, because my curiosity started in college because, you know, that's when people start experimenting or whatever. And that's when I, you know, I remember my friends talking about the relationships they were in. And I was just really interested with, hey, how's it going there? You know, um, are you happy? How's it, you know, and um, yeah, I think it's so, so important. How can people start talking about it? Like people listening right now, how do you start? Guys, girls, doesn't matter. Let, let's do women first and then we'll do men, assuming there are even different answers. Women, if you want to start being more comfortable with sex, like what would you recommend? How do they start? Just start. I like that. That's like the kind of, okay, that's the kind of cop out answer that I would give when someone says, well, how do <laughs> I so start? Funny. And I'd be like, just shut up and start. Like literally just, and sometimes. No, I don't be us yourself. No, but in all seriousness, no, y'all, I think that, um, yeah, like, I remember I worked with a client last year and a lot of it was like, listen, make it so easy and fun, right? Like make it like you're passing that, hey, can you pass the, um, the pepper, right? Pass like pepper. If, if you're that uncomfortable with it at dinner, kids go to bed if you have kids, I don't know. Um, and then you two stay up and talk about what, what are you into? What turns you on? What excites you? And if you this can't do that, start with yourself, journal. I feel like starting with yourself is like the best, if you're in a long-term relationship or something and you don't even think you can have that conversation. Cause like, what if he thinks I'm a bad mother or what if he thinks I'm a whore or so? like whatever is in your head. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I love that idea. Just like start with yourself and like, you will be weird about it at first. Like it will feel uncomfortable. You're probably going to think like, am I like inviting Satan into my heart by doing this? It's like, you just almost got to like take those baby steps. It's almost like, um, what's it called? Uh, what's it called when you, why can I not remember the word? where you start introducing yourself to some, it's called something therapy. Exposure therapy. Exposure therapy. Why did that elude me? So exposure therapy. Okay. It's almost like you have to try a little bit. Like what happens if I just lie in bed or in the bath and I play with my nipples? Oh, okay. Satan didn't come running around the corner. The church didn't kick me out. Like my husband didn't call me a big giant raging whore. Like everything's okay. And you just like slowly build up from there. And so for guys, I would say the same thing. Guys don't tend to have those feelings about their body. It's usually more their sexuality and their lust and like their testosterone and energy like that. So I would suggest doing the same thing, like start really slow, try. I don't know if you're really repressed and you don't like your sexual energy or anything, 
Go to the freaking gym and start lifting some heavy weights. Go punch a punching bag. Let some of that masculine energy out. Show that nothing bad happens. Then try talking to some women. Maybe you just talk to a woman in the cafe and you're like, hey, like, what are you up to? What book are you reading? That's cool. Like, start with that. See that most women will be nice to you. Then start like going on Tinder or something like that. Or start talking to more women in cafes and start asking for their phone numbers. Like little baby steps. Because you kind of have to teach yourself. Again, a lot of guys have this notion that like sex is bad. I'm using women. I got to wait till like I'm in a relationship. You almost have to show yourself that like the opposite gender wants sex just like you do. And like if you just go and meet the women that want to have sex with you or in reverse, women, if you go and meet the, the guys that want to have sex with you or if you're in a relationship, get a little closer to your husband. You have to like show yourself that nothing bad is going to happen and then build it up from there. Yeah. And also too, like, I think it's so important to keep reaffirming the fact that who cares what everybody else is doing? What do you desire for your life? Sexuality, spirituality, finances, like on all levels, right? There's a, it it sounds kind of harsh to say it, but I, I do bring this up sometimes where people are stuck on like societal expectations or what other people do and stuff like that. And I'll say like, okay, but do you actually want to live their life? Do you want to live an average life? Like, do you want to be the average person? Like, and you Mm -hmm. go through all the stuff an average person has, like they're probably overweight, unhappy, probably going to die in their seventies, you know, heart attack, like you said, Mm -hmm. dead bedroom for 40% of them. Like, do you want that stuff? And most people will say like, even the people who are currently in those situations will say, I don't want that stuff. Like I want to be somewhat better. And then you say, well, then why are you doing why are you following the template or the blueprint of what the average person is doing if you're saying you don't want to be average why are you caring what they will think about you by definition if you're saying i want something different you have to do something different you have to take different actions you can't be sitting there going oh but like what will sarah down the road think if i have more sex with my husband it's like who cares what she thinks like why does that matter yeah And and i think it's so so important because when you start to acknowledge that like that was something I really had to go through because I just turned 30 recently and societal expectation. Club. So funny. Yay. Thirties of her. Amazing. So I'm excited. Did but, you, okay. Yeah. I'm going to make Wait, a what? note to ask you. About, I'm sorry. I, I'm interrupting. I'm going to make a note. I want to ask you about 30. So, okay. So well, carry I was on. Sorry just for gonna, interrupting. Well, no, no, no. I was going to talk about this in the sense of like ex- societal expectation. I should be married and have babies right now. I'm not. Yep. And I think that, it's letting go of that. Obviously, yes, that is a desire of my heart to have those things, but am I going to just rush and find a guy and do it? No, right? I'd rather meet someone in alignment and then do it. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes when you have this like fear of what other people will think, you rush into a bad decision. You know what I mean? You take the wrong fork in the road because you, you've worried about beating your own path. I do want to ask mm-hmm. you about 30. Did you, because I have an answer to this myself, did you think that something bad would happen when you hit 30? Were you like terrified that like, I don't know, something bad will, ha- I'm old, like something bad will happen. Like midlife I didn't crisis. think that, but I did think, oh, whoa, whoa, okay. This is interesting. Like this feels different. It feels exciting. I definitely made me want to take way more care of my health. Yeah, me too, me too, me too, me too. Yeah, it just, it just makes you put a whole like different perspective on things, right? Like 25 year old me, maybe scrolling four hours on IG. Yep. But 30 year old me is like, mm. yeah. Yeah. It, and it's not even a bad thing. It's like, it's more, it's like you're cognizant that you only have a limited time on the earth. And, and I don't mean that to sound a bad thing. It's not like a fear of death. It's like, okay, I'm in my thirties. Like I want to start like getting my shit together a little bit. And I'm sure by the time we both hit 40, we'll be like, okay, now we're like, Okay, by the time we're 40, we'll, we'll definitely both have our shit together. I have no doubt about that. That's like 10 <laughs> years really? away, right? Yeah, I hope we don't flounder for 10 years, but like, not that we're floundering now. But <laughs> yeah. like, when we're 40, it'll be like, okay, now I know what I'm doing. And then I'm sure by the time you're 50, you're like, okay, mature. But there is a weird thing that happens when you hit 30. You're like, okay, like it's time to almost like take myself a little more seriously. In your 20s, you can get away with a lot that like in your 30s, not that you can't get away with it, but it's almost like you don't want to. You're like... I don't want to keep wasting time. I don't want to keep screwing around. Like you said, flicking through Instagram for four hours. Like I play so many less video games. I probably play once every three months, I'll play a video game for like 30 hours in total. Like, and whereas in my twenties, it was like, I would spend like 30 hours a week playing video games, like five hours a day. I just didn't care. Netflix TV didn't care. Not that Netflix was around back then, but yeah, you get to your thirties and you're like, okay, I'm going to take it like a little bit more seriously. I'm glad you didn't have a crisis because I thought I Um, would. 
I thought I would. I think I did it 27, but I didn't at 30. Me too, at 28. I was like, I'm old. Like, I'm going to die when I'm 30. Everything's going to fall apart. Uh, no one's going to love me. And then I got to 30 and like nothing really changed other than I just wanted to take myself more seriously. But like nothing really changed. Like nothing happened. 30th birthday, nothing. There's a lot of guys and I'm sure women. I'm sure women listening to this right now going like, oh my God, when I'm 30, like Haley, you're such a sweet person. But like, sweetie, like your life is over now. Like I've had guys do the same thing where they're like, Andy, you know, like it's great that you're 30 and you're still meeting women. But like when I'm 30, life's going to be over. By the time you get to 30, you're like, why did I have this stupid notion that like I was old at 30? Like why would 30 be old? And I'm sure we're going to have the same realization at 40. It's like, why did I think that this was like old? Like No, because our society is so ageist and sexist really <laughs> and biased on all the levels. It's ridiculous. When we really think about age, like we're just getting started, man. We are just getting in the playground of life, really, at thirty. Because yeah, I, I don't feel like, feel finally, like I have my shit together. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm finally figuring it out and getting yeah. really excited about the self discovery and growth mm -hmm. in terms of business and financially and sexually and all levels. And yeah, that's the thing. Like people act like thirty is so old, but thirty, you haven't even hit the halfway mark. Yeah, I know, I know, I I know, I know. But I think especially when we're talking about relationships and sexuality for women and men. Because this is something that comes up all the time. It's like, guys and girls, when you hit 30, nothing really changes. I promise. Like, I know you're sitting there thinking like, no one will love me. I'll be old and grow. No, you won't. So stop. I see so many people that come to me and they're like, I'm 27 and I feel like it's too late for me. And I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? I didn't even get started till I was 28. Why are you even, what is this crap? Like, just start now. Yeah, yeah. And that's a side of BS too. Yep, yeah. yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah. And I was at a restaurant on Friday night and this girl was telling me about how she knew a girl at 24 that got married and no, no. Okay. All of her friends at 22, 24 ish were getting married and she wasn't and she's 35. And so she told her friend, she was like, they're all going to be divorced probably by 30. <laughs> like, you have no, I mean, we don't know. I, I pray they don't. We don't know. All I'm saying is like, you have no idea who you are at 22, 24. Yeah. So I think yeah. that it's really important to, not judge anyone's path right like maybe that those people do know how they are they get in a great relationship and it's fine but a lot of those people like you know statistically i don't i think it's in the same year country what 50 percent divorce so yeah, it's like crazy yeah yeah which it should be something like i'd be i'd be weirded out if it was like five percent I'd be like, that's really one in 20 married couples get divorced. I'm so, like, the fact that it's 50 is just like, okay, we're, we're screwing up on a monumental level here. Like you guys are all screwing up massively. I don't know what you're doing, but like, holy crap. <laughs> it's like really? a coin toss chance. Yeah. Well, that's why now I saw the study today, actually. And it said, it was like 45% of us, uh, people are still single in America because like every, no one's getting married now. And I'm like, well, yeah, part of that is because people are just using more discernment. Right. And like really making sure that they are marrying the right person and i think i think that's a good thing right they could be marrying later just being more wise about their decisions yeah it gets framed as a negative thing especially from um i don't know if you're familiar with the red pill and that mm -hmm. community and stuff like they frame yeah. all this is very bad like oh women are disloyal and it's all women's fault that's why the marriage is is lower and stuff like that i guess what i would say is like why do you care what the marriage like, like not you personally but i'd say like why does anyone care not anyone, but guys and girls listening who are into self-improvement. Why do you care what the marriage rate is? Why do you care about being single and all that sort of stuff? Just focus on yourself. Like, like don't stress about that stuff. That's a separate side tangent, but. No, no, that's definitely true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like, who cares going back to what we're really concluding what we're talking about here. Focus on you. Yeah. Yeah. Show yourself a bit of love. Be the best you, you can be. We will start wrapping up, but. I really appreciate you coming on. And I want to say one thing, I'm going to throw it at you, throw you a hot potato. I don't know if that's a Southern saying, saying but I tried to look up some Southern sayings. Oh my God, you're so funny. Is that one? Throw you a hot potato? <laughs> yeah. I I, okay, good. I'm going to throw you a hot potato. What is one video, the one video that people should go and check out of yours? Like if people want to get familiar with your guide to love, your content, what should they go and check For out? For YouTube or podcast? You can do one of each if you want. Well, one that's gotten a lot of views was the power of semen retention. I saw that, yes. That's a really interesting one. Or the connection between sex and money. I mean, how to have a cervical orgasm. That's a fun one too. 
Yeah, any I've, of those three. I've saved that on my watch. I haven't watched that yet. I was going to watch that with Imogen because I was like, what the hell is this? Like, there was... The, yeah, I haven't other... even had that. I haven't experienced okay. it yet. Okay. How to... That's why how... I'm very anti... Oh, I feel bad. I don't want to say this. Because so many women get like attached to their vibrators and they're like, oh, I love my vibrators. But like, maybe take a break from it. Maybe only use it like every once in a while. Because a lot of women like you... If you want to have those deeper orgasms, you can't be numb right and if you're using your vibrator a lot it just affects your nerves i think i think i don't know if you already have you should do a, a a podcast on that or if you don't want to like i will because imogen same thing she came to that realization like a year or two ago where she takes little breaks from using a vibrator now because she goes like i just don't feel as sensitive like i don't feel like i can get there on my own like or, or me doing it like if she's been using the vibrator too much, I can't make her orgasm with my fingers. But if she takes like a month break, not even a month, God, if she takes like a week break, like she's just more sensitive. And if she takes a month break, which she has before, she's crazy sensitive. Like it's, it's quite easy to make her orgasm within like 10 minutes of rubbing, which for her is like really, really, really quick. Yeah, yeah. And I also think it's like, why are we in such a rush? But I also uh, do believe that- Performance anxiety almost? Like- There's too much pressure. Yeah. Yeah, like if I don't orgasm, as in a woman, if a woman doesn't orgasm within like X amount of minutes, she's frigid or something, or she's not sexy, or she's I know, whatever. it's so stupid. But yeah. yeah, going back to the vibrator thing, like I personally have never liked vibrators for me, but I do, I've worked with women that are like, oh my God, I just love it. And I'm not judging, like, listen, there's so much shame around sexuality. Man, if you love your vibrator, keep using it. Maybe just try to like limit it and see what happens, you know? Yeah. It's almost like porn with men. If you take a break from porn, like you just are way more sensitive and more sensitive to like, it's such a weird thing. If you watch too much porn, you do start getting in your own head. Men tend to objectify. Like when we look at porn or a woman's body, it's not like we're seeing the whole person. If you get too stuck into porn, it's like you're seeing the breasts and you're seeing like her vagina and you're just like only seeing those things. And then when you take a break from porn, it's almost like you come back to reality and you're having sex and you're like, oh, I like the way she smells or I like the way she looks or I like the way she moans or I like how she puts her arms around me. It's like you're more aware of the little details which you kind of miss out when you're on porn mode because you're just, in porn mode, you're just hunting for that big dopamine fix. You're just looking for the hottest moment, like the orgasm or the moment where she's moaning like crazy and you miss all the little details because you skip them. A lot of guys, when they watch porn, you skip to the end. Like you literally skip all the other stuff and so taking a break from that reminds you of like wait the other stuff is fun and it sounds like taking a break from a vibrator can be the same thing like you're reminded of the little feels and like how it feels to have your fingers there and stuff like that you're right you're right that is a good comparison yeah yeah yes yes and, and i i love that like i think i think personally the average guy is uh watching way too much porn um <laughs> when you limit that you are you know just all around a better experience yeah, for sure. If anything, I could cut down mine. And that, that's one of my goals, actually, in the a group that I'm in, where we're giving each other a weekly challenge of like watch porn as little as possible, like who can go the longest without watching it. So that's mm -hmm. been a great help. And, yeah. And listen, there's no judgment here. Like I, I, it's, it's like free. It's everywhere. I totally get why a lot of guys struggle with that. And it's promoted yeah. to them at such a young age. Yeah. But that's sexual creative energy you can be using to either have sex for your partner or your business. Yeah, yeah. Or fitness. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Pouring into yourself and into your own goals. All right. I really, really, really appreciate you coming on. I will leave links to the three videos that you said. I might also leave a link to the your Instagram as well. And anything else you want, you can just message me. But go and watch Haley. Your Guide to Love is her YouTube channel. She is absolutely amazing. And I really appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much. This is great.